Hi, I'm Lore from TankSpot and welcome to the Trial of the Crusader Raid Guide. In this video I'll be showing you the normal 10-man version of the Northrend Beast Encounter, the first of five in the Crusader's Coliseum Raid instance. This encounter is split up into three phases, each of which will present you with a different creature to defeat. The first of these is Gormak the Impaler, a large magnetor with a handful of snowballed minions. Gormak has four abilities to watch out for. Almost immediately, he will begin applying a damage over time effect called Impale to the tank, which stacks up quickly. You'll need to have two tanks alternating taunts at around 5 stacks to make sure the damage doesn't stack up too high. After the tank swap occurs, if you have a Hand of Protection available, you can use it on the previous tank to clear his Impale debuff and help reduce the load on the healers. He'll also periodically throw one of his Snowballed Vassals at a raid member. These will latch onto that player's back and start beating on them and should be killed quickly. Note that these are considered to be behind the player they're attached to, so they won't be able to hit them with most direct attacks. It's up to the other raid members to kill them. On top of that, these snowbolts will be throwing bombs at random raid members throughout the encounter, which leave a patch of fire on the ground. Recent studies have shown that standing in fire is a leading cause of severe burns and can even be fatal, so it's best to move out of these quickly. The final ability to watch for in this phase is an AoE stomp that hits everyone within 15 yards of Gormok for a small chunk of physical damage. It also interrupts spellcasting for 8 seconds, so ranged DPS and healers should be staying at max range as much as possible. However, if you have a melee heavy raid and your healers feel comfortable with it, you can have range classes move into melee range when snowballs latch onto them to help keep melees from having to move too much. This is the simplest of the three phases. Just stay out of the fire, kill the snowballs, and kill Gormok. Once Gormok has been defeated, you'll move on to Phase 2 and be faced with not one, but two Jermagars, Dreadscale and Acid Maw. At the start of the phase, Dreadscale will be on the surface and mobile, while Acid Maw will poke up from underground and be stuck in place. Both of these have an AoE breath ability, so each will need to be tanked and pointed away from the raid. Dreadscale's primary ability, aside from his breath attack, is a debuff called Burning Bile. He can apply it through two methods, a direct melee attack on the tank and a randomly targeted AoE Molten Spew that will hit its target and anyone standing nearby. Burning Bile will deal fire damage to the player affected by it as well as any nearby raid members, similar to Light Bombs from the XC002 encounter, so it's important for everyone to stay as spread out as possible. Meanwhile, Acid Mob will be applying his own debuff called Paralytic Toxin in a similar fashion through direct attacks on the tank and a randomly targeted AoE attack. Paralytic Toxin deals nature damage over time and applies a movement slowing effect that increases with every tick. The only way to remove Paralytic Toxin is to get hit by the AoE effect of Burning Bile. Players with Burning Bile or Paralytic Toxin will need to work together to remove it. However, be aware that in the early stages of the fight, Dreadscale's tank will be the only player with Burning Bile active. Since Dreadscale needs to stay pointed away from the raid, players with Paralytic Toxin will need to move to the tank on their own. Every so often, Dreadscale and Acid Maw will switch places. Whichever Germangar was previously underground will now be on the surface and vice versa. This adds a little confusion, but as long as you let the tanks pick their targets back up, it's very easy to deal with. Also note that Acid Maw will be spawning poison clouds similar to those seen in the Grobulus encounter underneath whichever German guy is on the surface. Just keep that one moving and stay out of them. In this video, we started DPS on Dreadscale and switched to Acid Maw when Dreadscale was low. This is because we were going for the not one, but two German guards achievement. However, this does add a little bit more complexity to the fight. The easiest way to finish this phase is to burn down Acid Maw first and then Dreadscale afterward. Be aware though that once Acid Maw is dead, Dreadscale will enrage and deal 50% more damage. Also note that due to the large amounts of fire and nature damage being thrown around, both fire and nature resistance auras or totems are very helpful here. After the two Jormungars are defeated, you'll enter the third and final phase and be faced with Ice Howl, a massive yeti. 
Ice Hell has three key abilities. The first is an AoE whirl that does a small amount of physical damage and knocks back everyone in melee range. The second is a randomly targeted arctic breath that freezes everyone in a cone and deals a large amount of frost damage to each over 5 seconds. This will need to be healed through, and a frost resistance aura or totem can help ease the load a bit. The third and most important of Ice Howl's abilities is his massive crash ferocious charge combo. He'll begin by jumping into the middle of the room and knocking everyone to the walls where you'll be stunned. Then he'll pick a raid member, let out a roar, and jump back to charge. Just as he jumps back, the stun will wear off and everyone will be given a temporary run speed buff. You'll need to use that buff to run out of his way quickly as he'll kill anyone that he comes into contact with. If no one gets hit, he'll crash into the wall and not only stun himself for a few seconds, but take increased damage as well. No threat is generated while he's stunned, so take advantage of this time to burn him down. As long as everyone can dodge his charge, Ice Howl is fairly simple and mostly just a matter of keeping everyone alive through his Whirl and Arctic Breath. Although there's ultimately a lot of things to learn and deal with, each phase of the Northrend Beast encounter is fairly straightforward. As always, if you'd like to know more about this or any other encounter, including the 25-man version, check the Project Marmot forums at tankspot.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, just follow the link in the movie details. Thanks for watching, and good luck!